Falmouth Community Television's coverage of town meeting is sponsored by the following corporate underwriters. Welcome to the Falmouth Chamber of Commerce. The Falmouth Chamber is dedicated to working on behalf of our members to make Falmouth a better place to live, work, and conduct business. We are committed to developing the economic, cultural, educational, and civic interests of our community and welcome the support from all organizations to achieve our combined goals. Whether you call Falmouth home, are a summer resident, or a visitor, we hope you take advantage of all that the Chamber has to offer. Carlson Printing for all your printing needs. 508-548-7303 or toll free at 1-800-696-7303. Our email address is carlsonprinting at aol.com. Carlson Printing for all your printing needs. Hosting services for FCTV.org are provided by Meganet Communications. Meganet offers a wide array of internet services, including Mega Backup Cloud Service, Server Colocation, T1, Fiber, Metro Ethernet, as well as telephone services such as Hosted PBX and Digital Voice. Their number one goal is to keep your communications network up and running and allow you to focus on growing your business. 877-634-2638 or Meganet.net. Additional funding and support provided by the following corporate sponsors. Barrett Plumbing and Heating offers expert plumbing, heating, and air conditioning services to all our residential and commercial customers on Cape Cod and surrounding area. We are a full-service plumbing specialist offering professional workmanship to suit your budget. Whatever your heating or plumbing need, you can always count on a job that's done right. Dogs and Hogs, family-owned and operated for over five years. Our slow smoke barbecue is available for dine-in, pick-up, or catering. Now featuring our homemade barbecue sauce. We also serve beer and wine, have gluten-free options, and lobster rolls. RJ's Variety and Liquor, family owned and operated for 15 years. We have a variety of beer, wine, and liquor. Local frozen stuffed quahogs, local frozen pizza snacks, and more. RJ's Variety and Liquor, 174 Sandwich Road, Tea Ticket. The attorneys at Oppenheim and Nickerson LLP have provided legal services in Falmouth for over 36 years. We advocate for our clients and work to provide quality representation in the areas of business and corporate law, real estate law, estate planning and estate administration. 508-548-8255. We at Falmouth Fish believe there is nothing better than a fresh piece of fish direct from the waters of Cape Cod in New England. Nothing beats waking up at 4 a.m to search out the highest quality seafood from the best fishermen in the world. Seven Stars Academy, offering martial arts and Tai Chi. Training at Seven Stars Academy can transform your life. It's amazing to see the positive impact it has on our students. Classes for adults and children of all ages. Confidence, not conflict, at Seven Stars Academy of Martial Arts. Hamilton Tree and Landscaping has been proudly serving Falmouth and the Upper Cape since 1978. Located on Route 151, we're available for all landscaping and tree concerns. Appreciating your property is our motto as we continue to keep your tree and landscaping needs our top priority. At a, a Paving, we believe in providing customers with quality products supported by excellent service. We provide commercial and residential seal coating, asphalt paving, and repair services for Cape Cod and Southeastern Mass. a, &A Paving, 508-540-4944. Calfee Insurance, offering insurance policies for your car, home, business, life, and disability. Calfee cares about all your insurance needs. 508-540-2601 and online at calfeeinsurance.com. 
Thomas J. Bunker and Jeffrey E. Reither are BSS Design, providing land surveying and civil engineering in Falmouth since 1987. Licensed and fully insured, they're located on Catherine Lee Bates Road, and their phone number is 540-8805. Wild Harbor General Store, located in historic North Falmouth Village, providing quality goods and services for 170 years. Continuing to make history with our support of FCTV's coverage of Falmouth Town Meeting. Liam McGuire's Irish Pub. With a newly renovated dining room, it's what an Irish pub should be. Main Street, downtown Falmouth. Bayside Kitchen and Bath at 419 Palmer Avenue in Falmouth, where design and installation professionals work closely with homeowners, architects, and builders, offering a full range of cabinetry, countertops, and faucets. Bayside Kitchen and Bath, returning you to beautiful spaces. Eastman's has been Falmouth's hardware store since 1913. With a newly added retail space providing kitchen accessory and gourmet foods, our friendly staff is available to assist you with your hardware and kitchen needs. 508-540-0407. Carpet Barn, Carpet One Home Showcase, a local family-owned business offering all your premier carpet and flooring needs. They also feature tile and vinyl floors, area rugs, window treatments, and kitchen and bathroom cabinetry, serving you at four convenient locations. Cavosa Disposal is proud to provide trash removal, recycling, and composting to local businesses in Falmouth and surrounding communities. Cavosa Disposal would like to thank its customers in Falmouth. Cavosa Disposal, 508-563-5070. Family owned since 1919, at Puritan Cape Cod you'll find the latest in men's and women's clothing as well as ski and tennis equipment and much more. Located on Main Street, Falmouth and in Chatham, Mashpee and Hyannis. Puritan Cape Cod, 199 Main Street, Falmouth, and online at PuritanCapeCod.com. FCTV is also supported by the following businesses and organizations. Nobska Lighthouse and Maritime Museum, friendsofnobska.org. Falmouth EDIC Economic Development and Industrial Corporation, 508-548-7440. Partners Technology Voice and Data Solutions, 781-930-5000. Wacoit Congregational Church, 508-548-5269. Annie Hartcool, Global Real Estate Advisor, Sotheby's International Realty, 508-868-0664. St. Elizabeth Seton Church, 508-563-7770. Vincent Associates, 548-6500. Turning Point Dance Studio presents the Sea Captain's Nutcracker at Tilden Art Center in Barnstable. Soar's Flower Garden Nursery, 508-548-5288. M. Duffany Builders, 508-540-3625. Cranberry Nail Spa, 508-495-9999. Neighborhood Falmouth, 508-564-7543. Danny's Barbershop, 508-548-6013. Carl F. Cavosa Excavating, 508-563-5530. Paul's Precision Automotive Repair, 464 Main Street, 508-548-3164. David Rogers Electric, 
residential, commercial, industrial, TV studio, and motion picture, 508-564-7507. Murray and McDonald's Insurance, 800-800-8990. The Davy Tree Expert Company, 508-548-2662. Andy's Barbershop, in the Falmouth Plaza. Chapman Colin Gleason, 508-540-4172. Hanush Jewelers, Downtown Falmouth, 508-548-9107. Mahoney's Garden Center, 508-548-4842. The Cape Cod Five at 508-457-5252, capecod5.com. The Cooperative Bank of Cape Cod, 508-495-5010. Martha's Vineyard Savings Bank, 508-627-4266. Vips of Falmouth Volunteers in Public Schools, 508-548-1621. Cape Cod Cleaning, 508-563-7622. Steve's Pizzeria and More, 508-457-9454. FCTV also thanks Roach Brothers, Stop and Shop, and Windfall Market.
All town meeting members present, please make sure you've checked in, you've picked up your electronic voting device, and you're seated in, uh, seated in the front half of the auditorium. Get your electronic voting devices. Okay, all town meeting members present, please sit forward and have your, oh, yeah, yeah. we're being asked if we could make the uh, names bigger, but this is, uh, this is what the template is, so. so. Um, are we ready to activate a quorum call? Yeah? Okay, so all town meeting members present, please press 1 for the establishment of a quorum. Okay, press 1 if you're present. You can press two if you're not here. Okay, 20 seconds left, yeah. yeah. Let's wait till this is done. Okay. Is it out of focus? Because I can see it fine. Okay, 
We have 184 town meeting members. We have a quorum and we'll be now in session. There was some question about the focus. I, I, I see it fine, so I don't know. Raise your hand if you believe that the slide is out of focus. Is this consistent? So a third of you think it's out of focus, a third don't, okay. Uh, okay, so only one of them's out of focus. Turn down the lights. I have no idea who controls the lights. If there's anybody listening to this microphone and you control the lights, could you turn them down a little bit that are focused on the PowerPoint screen? Is that a, a little better? A little bit better? Okay. Okay, we have 184 town meeting members present, and I call the meeting to order. Please rise for the presentation of the colors by the Falmouth Scout Leaders. Skipper, Ship 40, Bill LaRufa. Committee Chair, Troop 38, Mike Morris. Assistant Scoutmaster, Troop 42, Steve Brodette. Cub Scout Master, Pack 39, Tom Swift, Den Leader, Pack 41, Jed Goldstone, and Unit Commissioner for Scout Units, Alan Beal. They'll be followed by the Brian Baru Pipe Band. Let's have the town crier before the pipe band. Follow me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Tonight, rather than the town brand bass choir uh, doing the national anthem, I had the opportunity to celebrate uh, the Cape Verdean Festival Day at our Cape Verdean Club uh, on Sandwich Road, and a young woman who's a member of that club sang the national anthem. And uh, I said, what are you doing uh, on November 13th at 7 o'clock? And she said, why? Uh, and so uh, she uh, graciously uh, accepted uh, our invitation uh, to sing with us tonight our national anthem. From the Cape Verdean Club of Falmouth, Alea Ducha.
still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave for the land. Awesome job, Leah. At this time, I'll recognize Brenda Swain for the invocation. Heavenly Father, may our meeting this evening be not only an exercise of care and concern for our community and its residents, but also an example of how a community can agree and disagree and still be a community. We ask you to watch over and protect our families, our community, our nation, and our world. May your gift of peace become a reality for all. Amen. At this time, the Brian Baru Pipe Band will play Amazing Grace in lieu of our moment of silence. And may we take special note of Two members that we've lost since our last meeting, Scoba Rhodes, Walter Crotty, and a longtime observer and assistant to town meeting, Doris Busquet. Post. Ladies and gentlemen, the Falmouth Scout Leaders and Sea Scout Leaders Town Crier, John DeMello, the Brian Baru Pipe Band, and Aliyah Dutra, the Cape Verdean Club of Falmouth.
Okay, so we've had a town election since our last town meeting. At this time I'll recognize the town clerk for the swearing in of our new town meeting members. Mr. Clerk. The following people, please stand. Peter Clark, Catherine Bumpus, Weatherly Bernard Doris, Annie Dean, Judy Fenwick, Douglas Jones, Victoria Lowell, Eric Turkington, Ronald Sway, Karen Bissonette, Sandra Cooney, Andrew and Dufresne, Alice Dufresne, S Sandra Feynman Sylvia, Barbara Canalopoulos, Judith Magnani, Gerald Potamus, Judith Rebello, Susan Smith, Donna Lee Hurst, Nathaniel Estes, Rose Mace, David McDonald, Patricia Ann Mor Moran, uh, Laura Peterson, Esther Price, Catherine Ravens, Jeffrey Thomas, Cheryl Williams, Mary Ellen Allward, Helen Kennedy, Brian Keefe, Melissa Keefe, Tom Kowalski, Helen Martin, Michael Martin, Linda Toby, Kelly Toronto, Toronto, sorry, uh, James Callahan, Rosemary Carey, William Dinan, Mary Harris, Charlotte Harris, Nicholas Haney, Leonard Johnson, Aileen Kerwin, Charles McCaffrey, Robert Antonucci, Martha Azendorf, Michael Duffany, Charles Eastman, Mary Pat Flynn, Paul Sellers, Doug, Douglas Shearer, Dan Shearer, Brenda, Brenda Swain, Thomas Bushy, Patricia Calkins Martin, Linda Collins, John Collins, Carter Hunt, Sarah Long, Danny and Melgray, Savara uh, Pe Petel, Matthew Patrick, Barry Parrish, Brendan Smith, Mary Swain, Jack Tompkins, Tyrell Valley, Donald Weymouth, Scott Bennett, Bennett, Joanne Bennett, Faye Callie, James Cunningham, James Cummings, sorry, Jamie Donahue, Ronald Dwyer, Mark Mancini, Karen Schwab, Ronald Sw uh, uh, Smolowitz, Jay Savala, Philip Alfonso, Susan Augusta, Phyllis, Phyllis Day, Harvey LeMay, Joseph Martino, Joseph Nieto, Misty Nyemeyer, William Peck, and Gina Weber and Peter Nielsen. Please all repeat after me. Stand and repeat after me. I state your name. I to solemnly swear and affirm that I will faithfully perform the duties of a town meeting member according to the best of my ability and agreeable to the Constitution and laws of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and the bylaws of the town of Falmouth. So help me God. Congratulations. At this time, I'd start with the dispensing of the reading of the warrant. Madam Chairman of the Board of Selectmen for the main motion. I move to dispense with the reading of the warrant, except for the officer's return. You've all heard the main motion to dispense with the reading of the warrant. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, no. The ayes have it unanimous. Mr. Clerk, I ask that the warrant become an official part of the record for the meeting. At this turn, I will read the officer's return of the warrant. By virtue of this warrant, I have this day notified and summoned the inhabitants of the town of Falmouth qualified to vote on town affairs as said warrant directs by posting an attested copy thereof in town hall and in every precinct in the town. Signed by Constable Kevin Casey. And Mr. Casey will be our constable for this town meeting as well. A couple of uh, announcements. Uh, the service center, Falmouth Service Center, will be doing their annual turkey drop-off uh, up at the service center on Sunday, November 18th from noon to four. And any other items uh, that they might need, you could go to the Falmouth Service Center website uh, and bring those along, but they're looking for that fresh turkey drop-off on November 18th, noon to four o'clock. Tonight, we have a town meeting member who uh, is watching at, on television, is unable to, to be here with us tonight. Uh, it is her birthday, um, and it's also uh, probably the last town meeting that, that she will, sorry, <clears throat> the last time mean that she'll see. She wanted to be here tonight, she couldn't, but she said she was gonna tune in. And we just like to say uh, to Kathleen Murray, thank you for your contributions to the town over the last 35 years. She used to sit in the back, way back when I came to my first town meeting and check folks in on the uh, clipboard. And just like I sat in the back, she said, someday I want to be a town meeting member. <laughs> and I think I'm going to do it. And she did. She became a town meeting member from Precinct 1, and now from Precinct 2. 
Many of you know her from the Library Board of Trustees. She served as an elected trustee for 15 years. And she was an active member of the League of the Board of Spore Gardens, St. Barnabas Church, the Falmouth Public Library, just to name a few. Uh, Kathleen once said, you don't have to get involved in the town to appreciate what it has to offer. But the more you get involved, the more you love Falmouth. Well, Kathleen, thank you. Falmouth loves you too. Enjoy your last town meeting. <laughs> At this time, the chair would entertain a motion for non-town meeting members to sit up front with their respective boards and committees. So moved. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed, no. You guys have it unanimous. At this time, I'd recognize the planning board for notification of public hearing. Mr. Moderator, my name is Paul Dreyer, town meeting member, precinct two, and the clerk of the planning board. The town of Falmouth amendments to the zoning bylaw notice. In accordance with Chapter 40A, Section 5, Massachusetts General Law, and Article 43 of the Falmouth Zoning Bylaw, public hearings were held on September 25, 2018, on Articles 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 13, 14, 15, and 25 for the November 2018 Fall Annual Town Meeting, and all those who wished to speak were heard. As required, a report is hereby submitted with the Planning Board's final language and recommendations. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, the Chair would entertain a motion to allow non-town meeting members who are town employees to speak on any article before the meeting. So moved. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed, no. You guys have it unanimous. Okay. We're going to start with a blanket vote this evening. On the blanket vote, we'll go through each article. Uh, I'll read off the article number and a brief description. Call your attention to the recommendation. If you want uh, to take action other than the recommendation, or we need to take action other than the recommendation, stand up and yell hold on the article. After I go through all of the articles with a brief description, I'll return and run through just by number, and then I'll get a motion from the Finance Committee to pass all articles that were not held as recommended as the official action of this town meeting. Article 1, to hear reports and committees, it's a hold. Article 2, transfer the sum of $2,080.28 from certified free cash to pay unpaid bills. Article 3, hold. Article 4, this is going to be a hold. This is the capital budget. We'll have a uh, presentation on that. Article 5 will be a hold. It's a non-capital budget. When we get to those uh, in the course of the meeting, we'll go through them section by section. Article 6. Hold. Article 7. It's a hold. Article 8. Article 8. It's a hold. Article 9. Article 10. The recommendation is indefinite postponement. This is a Falmouth zoning bylaw petition article for ground mounted solar. Article 11. It's a hold. Article 12. Hold. Article 13. This is uh, to amend the zoning bylaw, dimensional regulations for minimum setback. Requirements for sheds 100 square feet or less. Article 14. Hold. Article 15. Article 16 to amend the town's classification plan for the purposes of adjusting the seasonal compensation schedule. Article 17, to amend the town's classification plan to delete the network computer technician and add the IT support specialist. Article 18, to approve the vote of the Falmouth Contributory Retirement Board to accept the provisions of Massachusetts General Law Chapter 32, Section 101, third paragraph to increase from 6,000 to 12,000 the annual benefit payment to surviving spouses of disabled public employees. 
Article 19. Hold. Article 20. Vote to accept the provisions of Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 143, Section 3Z, allowing any uh, the allowance of uh, part-time building inspectors. Article 21, to amend the Code of Falmouth, Section 107, Demolition. Article 22. Hold. So hold. Article 23. Hold. Article 24. So hold. Article 25, to amend the official zoning map of the town so as to extend Business 3 District by rezoning from Residential B to, res to Business 3, that portion of land at 289 Old Main Road shown on the map. Hold. Article 26, ask the town to create a solid waste division within the Department of Public Works. The recommendation is indefinite postponement. Article 27, to authorize the use of a second water meter at properties of the sewer service areas for irrigation and other outside uses. The recommendation is indefinite postponement. Hold. Article 28, to transfer the sum of $11,900 from free cash for Alice training. The recommendation of the Finance Committee is indefinite postponement. Hold. Article 29, vote the hiring of three police officers within the Falmouth Police Department. The recommendation is indefinite postponement. Hold. Article 30, to vote to appropriate the sum of $260,270 from fiscal 2009 community preservation revenues to construct a pedestrian bridge and wetland walkway at Swiss Crossing, Kunameset Greenway Heritage Trail and Gateway Park. Hold. Article 31, vote to appropriate or transfer the sum of $770,000, of which $480,000 is from the community housing reserve and $290,000 is from the community preservation undesignated fund balance to the Falmouth Affordable Housing Fund. Article 32, to vote to appropriate or transfer the sum of $400,000, of which $140,000 is from fiscal 19 community preservation revenues and $260,000 is from the community preservation undesignated fund balance to the land bank debt reserve account to fund conservation land acquisition debt service payment obligations beyond fiscal year 2020. Okay, article one is a hold, article two. Article 3 is a hold, Article 4 is a hold, Article 5 is a hold, Article 6 is a hold, Article 7 is a hold, Article 8 is a hold, Article 9 is a hold, Article 10. Article 11 is a hold, Article 12 is a hold, Article 13. Article 14 is a hold, Article 15 is a hold, Article 16. Article 17, Article 18, Article 19 is a hold, Article 20, Article 21, Article 22 is a hold, Article 23 is a hold, Article 24 is a hold, Article 25 is a hold, Article 26 is a hold. Article 27 is a hold, Article 28 is a hold, Article 29 is a hold, Article 30 is a hold, Article 31. Article 32. Sometimes the blanket vote makes town meeting goes quicker. Sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, for the main motion. To vote all the articles not held as recommended. Okay, you've all heard the main motion to accept the blanket. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed, no. The ayes have it unanimous. Mr. Chairman, for notification. of reconsideration for all, all, all articles held on the blanket. Okay, notice has been served. 
on the blanket vote. So articles that deal with money have to have notice served within 30 minutes of the time of the vote. So if we needed to go back to one of those appropriation articles, uh, notice needs to be served prior to the uh, ability to get them after 30 minutes. Okay, Article 1. This is to hear reports from committees. Mr. Chairman. That the town vote Article 1 as printed. As printed. This is to hear reports of committees. I have a series of committees here. I want to start with the Board of Selectmen. Committee reports are five minutes unless a specific additional amount of time is requested uh, and voted on by two-thirds of town meeting members. Okay, the Board of Selectmen for their presentation requests 10 minutes. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed, no. Okay, the chairs of the ayes have it by the two-thirds and you have 10 minutes for the presentation. Thank you very much. Welcome everybody. I wanted to do another State of the Town address this year because it was so well received last year. Um, Vice Chair Megan English Braga is designated for that report, but I wanted to just give a quick introduction. I carefully prepared it, I wrote it down, and I promptly forgot it at my last appointment. So I'm just gonna make a, a couple of points. Um, mainly, that going forward, the Board of Selectmen is gonna need a lot of help, and we're starting tonight with all of the study that you've made of the issues, your careful preparation, your listening to your constituents, and it's gonna need to carry forward, especially through April and over the next several years. The town is entering a point in time that I like to think of as the same point when your appliances in your home all go at once. Your refrigerator goes, your washer, your dryer. You have to start really thinking ahead in terms of priorities and working together, doing thing one, things once, coordinating, trying to do as much as you can as economically as possible and at the right time. When you think about just a few of the things going forward, we've got uh, another sewer project coming. We're gonna be looking at our fire department and the needs that they may have. Also, uh, other public safety, police. We're gonna be looking at all of our recreational fields. We're gonna be looking at the bike path. We're looking, looking at our municipal buildings. We're still trying to figure out the best way to resolve the debt from the turbines. We're gonna be looking at things big and things small going forward. Historic districts, there's a sensible plan um, to expand in some respects so that entire buildings are included whereas some properties may only be partially in. We're gonna be doing a lot of outreach on a lot of subjects, all of which are gonna have domino effects on what does, you know, what other kinds of ma maintenance are required. When we vote an initiative, looking ahead to see what kind of plan should we put in place so that the initiative is well taken care of, so that, it, you know, if it's a vehicle, if it's some, some sort of capital project, what does it need going forward? How can we consolidate? How can departments look and work together and communicate the best they can to the Board of Selectmen and the staff, uh, town mun municipal employees work very hard on trying to do things the best way that they can. One of the ways that we do that, and I think you'll see um, a presentation with respect to the Senior Center, we depend tremendously on volunteer efforts. I wanna look ahead, work with the school system in terms of paying forward the expertise we have in this town. So I just wanted to leave you um, to listen to Vice Chair Megan English Braga with that prism going forward. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I just want to apologize in advance. It's so nice and, and the lighting is beautiful down here. It's really awful up there. So if, if it looks like we're squinting and, and making insulting faces, some might be, but I'm not. It's just because it's so bright. So. Uh, I don't know if we can figure out a way to turn the lights down later, but um, as Sue mentioned, um, we meet every year and we look at our five-year strategic plan, and we really, um, you know, we put a lot of time and effort into thinking about how we um, look at the window of the next five years and, you know, look at the challenges that are coming before us, 
um, and, and some of the opportunities. And so for those who haven't had an opportunity to, to take a look at our report, um, I want to share that with you tonight. In its five-year strategic plan for FY 2019 to FY 2023, the Board of Selectmen adopted six strategic priority areas. First is enhanced community engagement. Second, balance financial and economic stability with community development. Third, maintain coastal resources, infrastructure, and beaches. Four, conserve and manage resources. Five, manage water and wastewater. And six, promote health and public safety. The board has spent much of the last year conducting community outreach initiatives, such as listening sessions, along with promoting policies and problem solving in each of the six areas. The board is well aware of the value, both in terms of economic development and aesthetics, of the finite resources we enjoy here in Falmouth. The need to manage resources with an eye towards conservation and innovation is a value shared by all members of this board. Development that is fiscally responsible can also be environmentally sound, and growth must be environmentally sustainable if it is to succeed in the long term. This board is looking for ways to promote smart growth that offers opportunities for an increase in affordable housing, job creation, and services for residents while limiting the impact to the historic nature of our community, the environment, and of course the budget. Responding to the impact of climate change in a town with nearly 100 miles of vulnerable coastline is of paramount importance, and the board continues to work towards both short and long-term responses to sea level rise, increasingly severe weather events, and the erosion associated with natural coastal processes. The board has drawn from a deep well of expertise in the Falmouth science community, as well as the institutional memory of those individuals who have long focused on the changing coastline in order to gather information and ultimately make recommendations regarding securing infrastructure, safeguarding private property, and maintaining our beaches and other natural spaces for the enjoyment of the next generation of residents and visitors. In addressing water of a different type, the board has received ongoing and timely assessments pertaining to the current and future capacity of our wastewater treatment systems. This year, the board set guidelines for consideration of waivers of, or of variances related to the flow neutral bylaw in order to streamline the process and offer a degree of consistency and predictability for applicants. The board will continue to work with relevant staff and departments to plan for future investments in the town's wastewater infrastructure. Despite the critical importance of each one of the priorities set at the strategic planning, one in particular is critical in order for the remaining five to be successful. It's no coincidence that the first priority set in the five-year strategic plan is to enhance community engagement. This year, the Board of Selectmen further advanced its promotion of community discussion and collaboration and collaborative problem solving with a commitment to inclusion and cooperation the board has facilitated a number of meetings with boards, committees, and the public. The board recognizes that maximizing the opportunities available to the town and minimizing the challenges faced by same must be a community-wide effort and, excuse me, and will require a multifaceted approach. To this end, the board and its individual members have spent the last year developing relationships with the talented and dedicated town staff as well as with residents. The board hosted a community social in the spring to show appreciation for the tireless work of the men and women who volunteer their time and talent on the many town committees. The board's effort at furthering the sharing of ideas were not limited to just boards and committees. In 2018, the board hosted the live survey at Falmouth High School in February, the first of its kind in Falmouth. The purpose of the survey was for residents to speak on a number of topics of concern and to express both their satisfaction and appreciation for, the town's, uh, for town life that they cherish and to outline their areas of concern or frustration. The board, with the assistance of staff and volunteers from the League of Women Voters, memorialized the public comments. And we've already utilized those public comments in order to set priorities for our agendas. One common sentiment voiced at the live survey was a feeling that should, there should be greater efforts made by elected representatives, including town meeting members, 
as well as town staff to communicate with residents. This request was honored by the board in the second listening session held in August. The town meeting members were invited and many of you attended, so thank you. Many of you attended the listening session along with a number of staff, including the town manager, assistant town manager, the entire board of selectmen, a number of department heads, and certainly many committee members. The listening session was well attended by the public and there was a candid, solution-oriented dialogue that yielded many important topics that the board will undoubtedly focus on in the coming months. A third community event is planned in the near future as this board values the exchange of ideas and opinions. In order to for further support its treasure trove of volunteers, in 2019, the Board of Selectmen will lead a comprehensive review and publication of committee mission statements and committee handbooks to coincide with its charter review initiative. It's often said that despite its growth over the years, Falmouth has preserved much of its small town character that so many of us cherish. The hallmark of a small town isn't necessarily dependent upon population or size, but rather on the degree to which each resident feels he or she matters to the greater community. This board believes such events as the live survey, the listening session, and our committee meetings and uh, other public forums foster that recognition and the importance that each individual plays in the prosperity and the future of Falmouth is what keeps this small town feeling alive and well. Thank you. Okay. Thank you to the Board of Selectmen. Senior Center Building Committee. Good evening. I'm Jim Vieira reporting on behalf of the Senior Center Building Committee. We've had quite a year since being appointed on October 30th, 2017. We started by reviewing applicants for our owner's project manager. We recommended P3 project planning professionals. Dan Pilato is the company principal. Dan jumped right in and recommended an aggressive schedule and exhibited a can-do attitude right from the start. The second order of business was to select an architect. In this case, we recommended BH&A. This firm should be familiar to many of you as they performed our earlier feasibility study and participated in some of the early public forums. BH&A has been diligent and professional in getting us the plans and documents we need for our goal of a fall start this fall. There have been many other contributions of time and expertise made by individuals, firms, and departments. Too many to list tonight, but know that we had the cooperation and assistance of the town manager's office, DPW, police, recreation, planning, finance, and others. Jill Irving Bishop, our senior center director, and Peter Johnson Staub, assistant town manager, have been involved every step of the way. By April, we had preliminary plans completed and a draft budget. The plans were presented at two public forums on April 24th. Everyone who attended had an opportunity to comment. The committee considered each and every comment and made changes as appropriate. We visited with the Board of Selectmen in May with the newly revised design and up-to-date up -to cost estimates. The board enthusiastically embraced the proposed plans. Some discussion developed over the design of the connector to the recreation building. With little more work, that issue was resolved on June 4th. The connection between the buildings takes the form of covered walkways. BH&A had provided us with several alternatives for the connector to consider. Ultimately, cost and practicality drove the decision. We thank the Board of Selectmen for their support and confidence in improving our recommendations. Uh, these slides don't show very well, but we have them on boards out in the lobby, and you're welcome to take a look at them at the break. Um, and this, this particular slide is the layout for the first floor. 
As most of you are aware, construction costs have continued to escalate. During the final phase of design, the committee worked through several alternatives in order to de decrease costs. This was a process that played out in a logical and systematic way. There was participation from the entire extended team. When we felt we had a complete package that met the mission of the Council on Aging, would serve our community well into the future, and was within the budget, we opened the bidding process. One is never sure how a bidding exercise will play out. In this case, we were pleased to find eight firms submitting bids. Even more pleased that most were within our cost projections. We are in the fortunate and enviable position of being able to fund construction, furnishings, technology, and incidentals within the appropriations approved by you and the taxpayers. The contract award for a general contractor is imminent. Construction is starting this fall, and in fact, we'll probably see progress within the next few weeks. We expect completion within a 12-month period. Let's see if I can get back here. Planning is ongoing with the Police and Recreation Department to ensure that those operations will continue throughout construction. Will the site be congested? Of course, the second entrance, this entrance, is already complete, and the planned exit to Dillingham Avenue will be started shortly. This will help enormously. The goal since last October has been to complete the site work and exterior construction before the start of the Commodore season and the Recreation Department summer programs. That hasn't changed. It's taken a while to get here, but when completed, I'm sure you will feel, as I do, that it has been worth the wait. I thank you once again for your continued patience and support. Thank you. Next up, Falmouth High School Field Committee. Before the um, presentation starts, I just wanted to say, um, Terry Medeiros, I'm chairman of the school committee, and the school committee is here tonight because we're pleased to introduce you, to you our new superintendent, Dr. Lori Dewar. Um, some of you may have met her because she's been doing some listen and learn tours with various stakeholders, stakeholders in the town. If you have or haven't met her, there's another opportunity tomorrow night before town meeting at 6 o'clock there'll be a coffee where you can speak with her in room 106. Okay, without further ado, I'm really happy to introduce Dr. Lori Durer. Welcome, Dr. Durer. I'd like to thank everyone for the very warm welcome I've received uh, here in Falmouth. Your kindness and generation uh, is just uh, very much appreciated, thank you. Um, I've come before you tonight to update you on the uh, town multi-sport field project. In September, uh, we went out to bid. However, the bid process revealed uh, needed changes. In order to be compliant with state regulations, we needed to adjust the request for proposal packet. In collaboration, uh, the school committee and the town hired a construction attorney to review and provide guidance on the necessary changes. I secured an advisory team early in my tenure uh, to guide the district through the field project. Along with the advisory team, the district, school, town, and the attorney uh, and CDM worked together to make the corrections. The major change was to separate the modular buildings um, the concession stand and restrooms, and the press box from the field project. So the projected timeline uh, for the concession uh, restrooms and the press box uh, modular building RFPs, uh, we will go out November 28th. Uh, they will appear in the combis and the newspaper. And on December 13th, um, the bids will uh, be received and opened.
The projected timeline for the athletic field RFP uh, on December 12th, the RFP will appear in the combis and newspaper. And on January 3rd, the bids will be received and opened. The projected timeline for construction and completion. During the months of January through March, the general contractor will organize, secure subcontractors, and begin assembling supplies, materials, and the modular buildings. From March to July, we will have the groundbreaking and the construction. In early July, uh, we, will, uh, we are projecting that the uh, project will be substantially completed, and by August of 2019, we will begin using the field complex. I would like to thank everyone um, that has uh, provided guidance uh, to myself uh, and um, the team on, through this uh, field project. And I would like to also thank all of you um, for uh, all you're doing for our students. Thank you very much. Next up, Charter Review Committee. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Peter Clark, Precinct 1 and Chairman of the Charter Review Committee. We are most interested in the fourth bullet point here, how we can get the public to participate in the process, but for a little context, we'll hit the first three. Who we are? The Charter Review Committee is required to be uh, called into session at least every seven years, so this is the fourth Charter Review Committee under our current charter, which was adopted in 1991 and started in 1990 and started in 1991. If you know any of the people on that list up there, you'll know there are five older men and two talented women, so we're lucky to have them. We're also helped by town meeting, uh, town councilor, town council Frank Duffy and town uh, clerk. Michael Palmer, we appreciate their help very much. What do we do? Our main purposes are simple. Um, our goal is to try to clarify the meaning of the charter language with amendments or create a more effective governing process. We are not allowed under the Charter Review Committee scope to change any of the basic structure that the, uh, the manager, board of selectmen, representative town meeting those elements are set, and that has to be done by a charter commission, which is a considerably more um, involved process to start. We can make suggestions other than the amendments, um, but they basically then go to the Board of Selectmen for consideration. Our process is deliberate. Uh, we're about six months into it at this point. And a year from now, we'll be bringing recommendations that have been screened and approved by the Board of Selectmen to the November town meeting in 2019 to consider um, as changes in the charter. Then it takes another year for them to get onto the ballot for the public vote that is required to put them into action. So how can the public participate? Um, you received tonight, as you walked in, a survey form on paper. Uh, if you prefer to go to SurveyMonkey, uh, you can do it electronically. Um, the uh, site, the URL for SurveyMonkey is up there, um, but it will also be available at the website. It is also on, the, on your paper version if you want to look at the paper. Um, the paper version will also be available for folks here or in the community at town libraries and town hall. Uh, we, can, we will also have it downloadable to your printer uh, from the website, we hope by the end of the week. Um, so, get involved with that. The survey is basically takes what is a one-page summary of the charter, which itself is 23 pages long, um, and it gives you an opportunity under each of the articles to tell us whether you think it's working well or whether you would like some changes. It is best if you go to the full charter, which is also available at, the, at our website on the town meeting. Um, web area. Um, so we'd love to you to fill out the survey. Second, we uh, hope you will participate in a public forum, which is scheduled for Wednesday, December 19th, 7 to 9, in the Herman Room. So come to that. 
And these two things wrap up the current July to December phase of gathering ideas. Um, we will then move into a process of selecting and determining amendment language. So the, the survey and the public forum end our first kind of six months of work. At the web page, you can see the charter itself. You can access it. You can see our meeting agendas and minutes. There is also a list there of evolving list of chartered questions. It now has about 30 to 35 items on it, and those have arisen from talking with officials uh, of the government here, having citizens come to us and ask questions. So if you want to look at the current existing list, you can go to the web page and see that. So folks, get involved, please. Answer the survey. Come to the public forum. Go to the website and see what's there. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next, I have the Coastal Resiliency Action Committee. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. <clears throat> Paul Dreyer, uh, Precinct 2, and the Planning Board representative to the Coastal Re Resiliency Action Committee. The board select and authorize the committee with a completion date of May 2020. So we have a little more than a year and a half to go. The action plan is to address the risks and hazards, sea level rise, and coastal erosion. You can see the committee members on the board. I won't uh, repeat that. Can you speak a little closer into the mic? You're too tall, you can't reach. <laughs> Are you ready? <laughs> Historically, we've had a lot of uh, incidents in Falmouth. This is a particular picture from the 1930 hurricane in Woods Hole. Uh, another one is uh, Falmouth Harbor, the flooding is Hurricane Sandy, October 2012. More recently, uh, Surf Drive earlier this year, and less than two weeks later, Monat Road. So we've had some pretty serious problems here along the coast. This is an example, and it's a little hard to see this, but basically this is insurance estimates on the frequency of events occurring over the years. It begins 1980 when it was about uh, 200 events a year. Uh, in the 90s, it went to three to 400. In the last couple of years, it's close to 700 events a year. So the frequency as well as the intensity is increasing on these storms. A direction from the town, local comprehensive plan was approved by town meeting, balancing use to coastal resources. Uh, that's in the plan that was approved by town meeting. The Boston, uh, the Board of Selectmen five-year strategic plan, develop a strategy. I won't go into it. I think uh, Megan English Braga took all the wind out of my sails on this one. She uh, clearly mentioned a lot of things that the Board of Selectmen is interested in doing with the Coastal Resiliency, and I appreciate her support. Uh, what are some of the issues? Natural forces, flooding, erosion, et cetera, resources and uses at risk, public infrastructure, and a number of things, beaches, wildlife habitats, and groundwater. And there's a series of government programs and laws from the national level, the National Flood Insurance Program, state level, Massachusetts Coastal Zone Management, Cape Cod Commission, and Falmouth Land Use Regulations as well. There's been a number of previous studies. The first two were done by the Coastal Resources Working Group. First one about 15 years ago, the other one about eight years ago, and several others here. There have been many more, but I just mentioned these as an example of some of the previous studies that have been done that we're relying upon. Uh, in addition to that, there were several presentations by people from uh, Hui, from USGS, from DPW, Ray Jack made a presentation, uh, the Harbor Master uh, made a presentation on, uh, on uh, some of the uh, work on the beaches. So we've talked to a lot of different people on that. There's a new state program called the Massachusetts Vulnerability Preparedness Program. Uh, application was submitted for that and we were approved in June of this year. What that means is that the town is now eligible for state funding for the resiliency projects and there should be some money coming up early next year. Falmouth is one of only two towns on the Cape that have uh, been given that designation. Article 5 in this town meeting requests some funding match for potential grants for action items in the spring of next year. We appreciate your support for that. Technical support services, uh, we're in the process of developing climate change vulnerability assessment and adaptation plan by Woods Hole Group. They'll be preparing a high resolution hydrodynamic model of the entire coast 
of Falmouth. Developing targeted strategies to reduce risk, flooding impacts, adaptation strategies, outreach and education with a completion date of June of next year. We're very excited about that uh, potential input. What are some of the implementation issues? Decision policies and standards, law changes, administrative organizational changes, proposed capital costs. We're talking about two uh, horizons. Near term is 2030 and the midterm is 2070. In addition, there'll be coastal sec sections or neighborhoods in Falmouth going along six on Megansett to Woods Hole and eight from uh, Nopska to Wakoit. They'll be dealt with individually in the report. What are the recommendations going to be life? Extremely complex, a lot of overarching issues, management, legal policy impact, mitigation, costs and funding, project timelines, but there are considerable benefits, but how we need to act now. Thank you. Great, thank you. Next, I have the Recreation Committee. Moderator, I might need 30 seconds extra. Okay, they're asking for five minutes and 30 seconds. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed, no. You guys have it by the two thirds. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Scott Gelfi from Precinct 8, speaking to you tonight as a member of the Recreation Committee here to give our committee report. I'm with my fellow committee member, Mike Halen, who's put together some slides for us. I would first like to also acknowledge, as the moderator has, um, the somber news that our fellow committee member, Walter Crotty, passed away in August. Walter was a longtime committee member, as well as a member of the school committee and town meeting. We honor his military service, his service to the Recreation Department, and the town of Falmouth, and he will surely be missed. Former longtime committee member Sandy Cooney has been reappointed to serve in Walter's place. Sandy brings a breadth of functional and institutional knowledge, and we are excited to have her back. At last April's town meeting, I reported on the deplorable conditions of our fields. While much of the conditions, poor conditions still exist, progress has been made. We have seen a new focus from the selectmen, town manager, and the DPW, and we are pleased with this start. With the $200,000 that was appropriated from last year's town meeting, the Sandwich Road football field has been renovated and it came out great. Currently, one of the fields on Trotting Park is being redone and is expected to be ready for use by next fall soccer season. Another positive that will impact the recreation fields is the new all-purpose field at the high school that will be ready to go next year. It is expected that some of our rec sports will be able to use the field during non-high school athletic times. This will allow our fields to get some much needed rest and will allow work to be done on others. A third positive, and perhaps the most important, is that the DPW has requested funding for landscaping equipment that they so desperately need, as well as money for field renovations and maintenance. We were excited to hear that they will be requesting this increase every year for the next 10 years. We encourage you to support this request during the budget article of this meeting for the 2019 budget. The Rec Committee will be staying vigilant in keeping track of this progress and will be looking at other areas of funding to help expedite the complete restoration of our fields. Another item that the Committee has set in motion is a field cancellation alert policy. Joe Olenek has set up a Notify Me through the town website and is in the process of getting all relevant parties signed up so that with a click of a mouse, he can notify user groups that the fields will be closed due to inclem inclement weather. Just another step in keeping our fields in good shape. In the coming weeks, the new senior center will break ground and the rec staff is ready for the upheaval. We will certainly be impacted by the construction. The SBLI playground will be removed and will go into storage with the hope that a spot at the Sandwich Road fields gets prepared. The new playground will be built on Fuller Field with the $300,000 that was appropriated once the senior center is complete. The parking lot will be in impacted the most during construction, but on the positive, the new entrance has been completed and should help alleviate congestion. Perhaps the biggest news of the year at Gus Canty is that Joe Olenek has shed the interim title and been made the permanent director. Joe and his staff do such a great job with all the programs the REC has to offer. 
like summer camp, soccer, multi-sports, basketball, tennis, flag football, youth nights, family nights, father-daughter dance, mother-son mother dance, just to name a few. And the list continues to grow with new programs such as Junior Roller Derby, Youth Volleyball, PALS, Eccentrics, Sailing, Kids Fest, Community Yard Sale, the New York City Trip, and of course the new growing phenomenon, Pickleball, utilizing 14 hours per week. With this increased programming and more activity expected from the Senior Center moving next door, the need for additional staff is paramount. Town management has, has made a failed attempt at hiring a person that will split time between the rec and beach departments and is now advertising for a program director that will be cross-trained in beaches as well. Although we are not really even sure of the plan as town management does not ever discuss this with our committee. Thousands of children, teens, adults, and seniors utilizing our programs more than ever before and with less staff than ever before. Makes little sense. Present staffing levels are causing a safety and quality issue as supervision of activities, mentoring youth coaches, and general oversight is lacking. Our charter mission is to make recommendations to the Board of Selectmen. Well, we recommend that an assistant director be hired and three full-time programmers remain full-time where their sole focus will be on the rec department and Joe be given the flexibility to add part-time and temporary staff when needed. Thank you very much for your time, and if anyone has any questions or concern, you can always attend one of our meetings that are the second Wednesday of every month. Thank you. You didn't even use the extra 30 seconds. Solid Waste Advisory Committee. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, Mark Fenner from the Solid Waste Advisory Committee. Uh, Linda Davis is our chairman, but she had an issue arise and asked me to fill in for her. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank everybody on the committee, um, especially John Schneider, who's recently uh, retired from public service. Um, he was quite, um, uh, he did a lot of the work in the uh, food waste shed that we have at the dump. And I want to uh, clear some things up there was a letter in the Enterprise uh, regarding this uh, uh, shed at the facility. We don't intend that it takes all the food waste in the town. It's uh, the fact that uh, upwards to 25% of our garbage, which we pay for by the ton, is food waste. Um, actually, that's the national average. We're down around 15. It's strictly intended to train people to compost at home. Uh, and hopefully we can get some of that tonnage down and save the town some money and continue with the curbside service and all our services. I'd like to add that uh, last year uh, we received $28,000 in grants from the state, which is the highest of all the 15 towns on the Cape Cod, and uh, that was greatly uh, affected by the hard work of our chairman, Linda Davis. She really does a lot. Um, what do we got here? November 15th is America Recycles Day. I'd like everybody to just take note of that and uh, try to make an effort to recycle right every day. Um, and we have a uh, short film that's been provided up to us by our uh, curbside uh, company, it Republic. It's a simple thing that has a big impact on all. They can say it better than I. Yep. Recycling can be a simple thing that has a big impact on all of us. Republic Services can help you make a difference in your community with these quick and easy tips to becoming a better recycler. It's as simple as one, two, three. First, know what to throw. You should always recycle paper and flattened cardboard, metal cans and plastic bottles and jugs with the lids on. Things like construction materials, yard waste, and greasy pizza boxes are not recyclable. Here are some common household items that are mistaken for recyclables. These items can contaminate or interfere with the recycling process. When in doubt, throw it out. Now that you know what to recycle, it's time to make sure it's properly prepared. Recyclables should be empty, clean of all food and liquids, and dry before you place them in your recycling container. 
the last step is the easiest. Never bag or bundle your recyclables. Placing each item in the container individually allows us to sort recyclables faster and more efficiently. This will ensure they become quality materials that can be turned into useful new products. By following these three simple steps, know what to throw, empty, clean, dry, and keep it loose, you can help eliminate contamination and minimize the amount of recyclable material that goes into a landfill. Together, we can make a difference in our homes, our communities, and our world. Learn more on how to become a better recycler at RecyclingSimplified.com. One more moment uh, to remind everyone, please do not put plastic bags in with your recycling. They tangle up all the machinery at the recycling facilities and they make them stop three or four times a day and they literally have to go with knives and, and cut the things out of the works. Try to just keep them out of your garbage, your recycling. Thanks. Thank you. Any other committees want to make a report? Hearing none, the question will come in the main motion to accept the reports. All those in favor signify by saying aye. All those opposed, no. The ayes have it, unanimous. Article three, Mr. Chairman of the Finance Committee for the main motion. Mr. Moderator, that the town vote Article Three as recommended. As recommended. This is we appropriate seven million six hundred thousand dollars for design construction of water mains and to meet the appropriation to transfer the sum of four million five hundred thousand for certified free cash and the treasurer with the approval of the Board of Selectmen authorized to borrow three point one million. Mr. Rowitz, I think, held this. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Ray Rowitz, Precinct 5. Article 3 is to appropriate the money for funding the design and construction of water main replacement and other costs incidental and related thereto. Designing and engineering for the re replacement of water mains will certainly include the location of underground conveyances including gas lines, sewer lines, and existing utilities. This area, particularly from Palmer Ave to the administration building, should be included in the engineering for underground utilities at this time. This is a distance of about two and a third miles, of which a third of a mile is already either underground or diverted. That's the area along Main Street. I have some pictures that I took. It's, uh, this is heading east uh, from Palmer Avenue uh, towards the post office. Poles along Village Green. These are where the poles stop and either the utilities are underground along Main Street or diverted into the back of Main Street. They pick up again uh, just after Library Square where they continue on and they zigzag past Gifford Street there's poles and wires, and more wires and poles, wires through trees, more poles and wires, transformers and trees. There's small light poles there you can see. You can see right down there, but they're dwarfed by the giant power poles. There's poles past the police station, past the Edward Marks Jr. building, and the rec center and the future senior center. This is up Davis Straits. You can see how nice the trees look on the plaza side and what's happened to the trees where they have to uh, cut them uh, to make way for the wires. This is continuing towards shop, the Stop and Shop Plaza. There's poles in the sidewalks. Not much room here for power poles. More poles in the middle of the sidewalks. Poles with extra poles, poles on both sides, more of the same, poles through trees, but there's no poles at the library. Main Street looks great because we don't have those power poles. Um, at a recent selectmen's meeting, which included a public forum for the Route 28 
improvements, Mr. Jack had indicated that the consideration of underground utilities for the project. With major improvements planned for this road, it makes sense to do the job right the first time and take care of the underground and surface needs at one time. Hopefully, Mr. Jack and Mr. Rafferty uh, can coordinate and create a design that incorporates all of Thalmouth needs without having to excavate several times. Three years ago, the town of Orleans, in cooperation with the Cape Cod Commission, finished a study to understand the costs and steps involved in placing un utilities underground, particularly along Main Street in Orleans. Orleans was given an estimate from Eversource of $3 million a mile, and cable and other utility costs were assumed to be about the same at $3 million a mile. If we can plan to underground the utilities for two miles through Falmouth's most dense business district, uh, the area that my picture showed, we'll have the tools helpful to evaluate undergrounding the rest of the town, and if and when we decide to do it. Uh, thank you. Please vote yes. yes. Okay, further discussion on Article 3. This requires a two-thirds vote for the authorization of bonding. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed, no. The ayes have it unanimous, and I declare the two-thirds majority. Article 4, Mr. Chairman, this is the main motion on the capital improvement budget, Mr. Chairman. That the town vote Article 4 as recommended. Okay, as recommended. We're going to have a presentation and then we will go through uh, each uh, line item, and you don't, it's not a blanket, you don't hold it, you just ask a question or make an amendment as we go through it. Ms. Petit. Good evening. The Town of Falmouth Capital Plan. We present the capital plan every year at the annual November town meeting. Um, probably sick of hearing me saying this, but it's use of one-time revenues to fund one-time expenses. The process for the capital plan, we receive requests from department heads, and it's reviewed by myself, the assistant town manager, and the town manager. And the town manager makes recommendations to the board of selectmen. We give a presentation um, at the end of August to the board of selectmen. And then the selectmen approve it, make changes, um, and they send it on over to the finance committee. And the finance committee reviews it and makes recommendation, recommendations to town meeting. Next slide, please. In this capital plan, it's about 10 million. Um, we're using 1.5 million in the capital stabilization fund. We've allocated a couple of um, capital articles, $8.5 million of free cash, and a million of that is allocated to the school department. In the initiatives, the major initiatives in this capital plan, which is outlined in your warrant booklet, um, we're <clears throat> requesting a ladder truck, fire engine, two ambulances, two dump trucks, trash compactor, parks equipment, vehicle replacement, boat replacement, and other major initiatives, which you'll all see in, also see in Article 5, we actually look at it comprehensively, but we break it up into two articles. There's water projects, we um, have our top gun conversion, um, a lot of IT infrastructure upgrades, coastal re resiliency, which you've heard um, previously, road maintenance, um, some wastewater equipment, and again, you heard in a previous presentation, field maintenance. We continue to make progress funding these large capital items. And we, we're maintaining our vehicle replacement program. And the detail on all your capital and non-capital items are in the back of the warrant booklet. And as you look at the line item, it will tell you what page it corresponds to. So this should be helpful when you're um, reviewing and making um, recommendations on these articles. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Petit, and thank you for the, uh, the page references. That makes it a lot easier for town meeting members to zero in where we're at. Okay, so we've got to uh, transfer the sum of $7,117,992 from certified free cash, $1,500,000 from the capital stabilization fund, $130,000 from the waterways improvement fund, 
and $89,000 from Article 4 of the November 2017 town meeting, Coast Guard Water Main, for the funding. Any questions about the funding sources? Okay, information technology. Yep, Ms. Callahan. No, uh, but just with the mic, please. Yep. With the microphone, please. Thank you, Jim Kelly, and uh, Article 5, uh, uh, Precinct 5, excuse me. Um, I was just curious about the infrastructure upgrades. Uh, can I make the assumption, uh, we talked about, Ray talked about poles. Um, that will be underground, I assume, whoever is in charge of that? From the town hall to the police station, I believe? Is that? So this is information yeah. technology. It's going to be underground, right? That whoa, 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 let's have a microphone. We have a microphone Thank you. for our IT director. Uh, so just to answer that question, right now the plan uh, for the fiber interconnect for the infrastructure is going to be aerial. Uh, if we have the opportunity to bear it, we will, but it comes at an extraordinarily extra cost uh, as well as timing. Um, uh, most of the fiber... No, no, we need microphones when you speak. We're on television. We need the record. Mr. Bansworth, you want to introduce? So this is Greg Bansworth, by the way. This is our new IT director. I'm sorry, I'm uh, Greg Bansworth. Who, who's running our uh, IT, t um, the electronic voting system for yes. us. Yes, sir. Right. Welcome. Thanks. So in other words, we're going into the 21st century with the new technology, mm -hmm. and yet we're going to be, t we have storms. And so what we're dependent on is a wooden pole. That's uh, what you're basically saying. We have a major storm, a pole goes down, and we have lost our communications. I mean, it seems to me like we're looking at 21st century technology with 19th century infrastructure. Uh, I, it's quite common to have a lot of fiber runs, especially on the Cape. I would say 90 to 95 percent of fiber runs, even by large companies such as Comcast or Open Cape, are aerial. It's just the, the way that we have to play the game down here. Uh, we, we will try to bury whenever possible. Um, but the opportunities for that are actually quite complex, which is the reason that the 450 miles uh, of fiber that the Cape had installed recently um, has very little uh, underground burial. There's a lot of challenges to, to getting that stuff done. We'll definitely take those opportunities if we find them, uh, but for this particular project, we don't see any at the moment. So in other words, all the things that Ray just showed us that looked very fourth world to me, mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna continue and adding more to it by putting another cable up there. Uh, yes, sir, but uh, I would uh, also note that we have had an uh, old antiquated fiber connection between uh, the two buildings noted for about 20 years without any uh, particular issues uh, with hurricanes. But, but never it, say never on Cape Cod. If, indeed, Thank you. I agree with that. Further discussion on the IT budget? Mr. Donahue. Bob Donahue, Precinct 3. Through you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, didn't we just vote to put all the cables underground on the, on the last issue, on, the, on doing the road? Aren't we going to do it? I, I thought that's what, what was part of it, was going to be to put the cables running all the way up from Palmer Avenue up uh, underground. Now we'd, we're we'd like to do that eventually, but that's not part so of the previous vote. Okay. I thought it was, sir. Okay. So we have, let me say this. We are digging up Main Street. Could we put the fiber in when we have Main Street dug up? Uh, we're definitely talking with uh, Ray Jack and everyone with that project. If we have that opportunity, uh, we'll definitely take advantage of it. Uh, but right now, with the current plans, I don't see that happening. Why? Uh, because uh, the timing of uh, how it would go is over two years. Uh, we need a fiber connection up sooner rather than later, so it, it would have to string an aerial one way or another. Even if we were somehow to get underground cabling, which is very different from the water main project, um, and does uh, incur a lot of extra costs that have not been approved uh, by the town, um, the timing would still uh, require us to string it on aerials first. Thank you. Yes, sir. Anything else on information technology? 
general government. Public safety. Yeah, Mr. Dufresne. Yeah, you want to grab the mic right there? General government, <clears throat> uh, Andy Dufresne, Prison 2. Uh, human services relocation, $100,000. Is there some kind of an explanation of what, where, and we're going to spend $100,000? It is currently in, in a leased situation in Town Hall Square. Mr. Sousa? Uh, certainly, Julian Suso, Falmouth Town Manager. Um, several years ago, uh, as part of an overall uh, concept presented to the Board of Selectmen, the Selectmen uh, voted to affirm the relocation of the uh, human services function in the town to the Marks Building. And um, that, that first floor space had recently been uh, vacated by the uh, Falmouth Retirement Board, which had done a wholesale upgrade uh, to create um, an office function in the entire first floor of the Marks Building. We also had an architect, Jim Petro and Associates, analyze uh, the exterior and interior of that building and made a recommendation for anticipated costs uh, for that uh, first floor improvement. And that's what appears uh, as part of the uh, request to town meeting you know, under general government. Uh, Human Services is currently paying uh, slightly over $25,000 annually for the rental space, and the selectmen voted to determine that we should uh, uh, cease to have uh, town departments within rental space and instead relocate them to town-owned buildings. Uh, just, just for the information of town meeting, uh, probably an explanation of the estimated cost. This building is some 300 years old, and from my understanding, does not meet the guidelines for public safety and public habitation. Thank you. Mr. Moderator, may I comment on that, please? Yes, sir. Part of the analysis we had the architect conduct affirmed that that building is sound, and uh, uh, this is an appropriate location for such an office use. Anything else under general government? Ms. Fenwick? Yeah, I got Ms. Fenwick first. I'll, I'll get you on the list. We're under public safety, right? Uh, th this, we went back to general government, so. Oh, oh okay. Um, you got public safety? Yes. Mr. Sherry, you general government? Yes. Okay. I'll, I'll come yeah, I'll come back. Mr. Sherry. Microphone for Mr. Sherry, please. Dan Shearer for Precinct 6. I'm talking about the golf equipment, and I'm sure these or, or two lawnmowers are needed, and I'm going to vote for them. But for three years, I've asked for a report from the golf committee as to what the town gets out of this rent and what we get out of this rent, because I don't understand why we have this golf course that we keep pouring money into, don't, I believe, not making any money, when if we gave it away, it would stay the same as it is now, because the land cannot be used for anything else except open space. So uh, I would like to have a report at next town meeting on the golf committee and what the, we are doing with it and why. Thank you very much. Okay, anything else under general government? Mr. Netto? Uh, General Netto, Precinct 9, I have to agree with Mr. Sher. And I'm not going to hold the $63,000, but folks, just let, let, this is an actual operating expense that should be incurred by the concessionaire, the person who has the contract to run the golf course for the town. 
buying lawnmowers. This, I just, I just, how did, um, is there someone on the stage that could answer that question for me? How was this agreed to when we put out uh, the lease to this property? This would be akin to buying range balls. It's a daily operating expense. You can't have a golf course without a lawnmower. But what's the thinking? Who, how was this contract written? Ms. That Petit? Could, could somebody ask me why we're picking up? Ms. Petit? Sure. Um, when we went out to rebid the um, golf course from the contract to lease the golf course, we looked at, it was um, four years ago, I believe the contract's up a year from um, December. We wanted to maximize the revenue in, that we got from the leaseholder. And in order to do that, we bought the capital equipment. If we were to roll the capital equipment into the golf course, we would have received less in revenue. So we own this equipment, and that's how the contract was structured. If you recall, we owe $600,000 a year in debt on the golf course. So we wanted to maximize the reoccurring revenue in order to cover that debt, and this was the best way to do that. So the 60, we get more back after we spend the 63,000, we're getting a better return on investment? Is that what you're telling me? Yes, if we had structured the capital equipment into the contract, we would have received less in revenue to cover the debt. Thank you, Jen. Shepard. On the, uh, Susan Shepard, Precinct One. On the human services relocation, that hundred thousand is for anything to be done to the uh, poorhouse. That is strictly for uh, interior renovation on the first floor. So we have a building that we supposedly honored Eddie Marks with by naming it for him. And we have let the building deteriorate, sadly. There are aspects of the second floor and the um, attic floor which are filled with historic um, They, they, they describe how that house was used, including a semi-dungeon on the uh, attic floor. And I think it's criminal if we do this without planning to a renovation for the entire building. Um, this, is, this is a building that's on the National Register. And uh, if we move um, human services in there, Nothing is going to happen to those other two floors. There's a lot that needs to be done to that building, and I feel like it should be done uh, before any town department moves in. We have other buildings in town that the town could use. We are, we're building a senior center. There will be a, an available senior center building. Um, I think that the Eddie Marks building should be uh, attacked as a full project. Thank you. Dr. Schneider. No, the microphone, can you stand, Barbara, so she can see? Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Barbara Schneider, Precinct 4. Um, if I'm not mistaken, and maybe, Jennifer, you can uh, tell us this, we spent some considerable money some years back with community preservation dollars to work on that building. And I believe at that time we did a very thorough study of the feasibility of the second floor. And it was deemed at that time something that should be not done, that it was almost um, beyond belief the cost to do that second floor correctly. I think at that time it was determined that that building's exterior and first floor could be very usable 
but the second floor and, and above could not be. Um, somebody might want to look into that and bring that, bring that information forward if anyone remembers it, um, but I do know there was money spent at that time, and I'd like to know okay. Ms. Petit, do you wanna what we did that? on that and what still needed to be done since it wasn't that many years ago we did this. Yes, I don't recall the CPC um, funding or the feasibility study. I definitely can, you know, look at that. I know that we did have an architect look at it in 2014, and um, and that's what I'm familiar with. Okay, Mr. Donald. <clears throat> Malcolm Donald, uh, Precinct Six. Um, two questions. <clears throat> uh, one um, on the ESCO. Uh, uh, could we get, is there a breakdown on that, and is there any money involved in the, uh, that 375000 that's going to be going to the poor house? Mr. Sousa. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Moderator, Mr. Donald. I don't have the exact amount, but a portion of that uh, ESCO Phase Two is for the uh, uh, needed upgrade on the HVAC system in the Marks Building itself. And we've been awaiting that completion so that we can move forward with the uh, first floor uh, um, office upgrade. My, my next question is, um, have, there, uh, have there been any, uh, well, I understand there have been some discussions with uh, other groups or other tenants that might occupy the poor house. Can you enlighten us as to what those discussions who those discussions have been with, and uh, what the, um, the you know the character the, uh, the uh, give us some idea of the discussion. Thank you. Do you want me to get into that, Mr. Moderator? It's up to you. You asked the question. It's, you want, it's, want to it's really un unrelated to this proposal, but I'm happy to affirm uh, a single private group. Uh, uh, had approached me, a private uh, nonprofit group, with a suggestion that they take over the building, uh, but it was with a condition that uh, no town department could be there. It would be uh, their own uh, uh, determination of what would go in that building and uh, uh, how that would go forward. It also relied on a, a uh, representation that a, s a significant amount of CPC dollars would need to be funneled into uh, that building. Um, I advised uh, those who had spoken to me, we met uh, on more than one occasion, uh, that I had a uh, voted directive from the Board of Selectmen that the Human Services uh, Department was to go into that building and ultimately be part of the uh, uh, really community center complex, which is now uh, moving forward as part of the new senior center construction, the community center construction, police department, and uh, the Marks building. Uh, and really, if uh, one uh, uh, considers the concept, uh, the whole idea is a return to the original roots of the poorhouse. The Human Services Department, of course, uh, serves the, uh, uh, the most needy in our community. Uh, and, and those that uh, uh, frequently have no one to speak for them and are often in harm's way. And uh, Susie, our uh, director, does a remarkable job there. There's a very close linkage with the day-to-day -day work that happens in the Senior Center, also as part of the expanded Community Center, and Human Services works closely with our Police Department. So this is a proposed relocation um, that has been well thought out, discussed in advance, and uh, really uh, has a considerable amount of logic as part of it. And again, it would be returned to the roots of, the service roots of the original Poorhouse, which we find to be uh, particularly appropriate as well. And uh, Susie can certainly make some further comments on that if it would be deemed to be appropriate. Good evening. I'm Susie Hotman, the director of uh, the Human Services Department. I would just reiterate what Julian just said, that um, over the past uh, many years, we've done a lot of collaborative work with uh, the departments that are on that 
what we're uh, becoming as a municipal services department. Uh, our department serves not just the most needy and vulnerable residents of the community, but really we want to be a service to the entire community and many folks that utilize our department um, may not be uh, deemed the most vulnerable or needy, but still um, gain a great deal of support and guidance from the department. So being at a location where intergenerally, intergenerationally we're working, there's uh, the youth and the seniors, and we do a lot of work with the police department as well. So I think it makes complete sense uh, for us to be on that campus and we have the support of the department as well. Uh, not to mention that I think that returning to the roots of the poorhouse um, means something historically for the town too. So I think it's a good use of the, the building itself. Okay, Mr. Dufresne. Adrian Dufresne, Precinct 2. Not to believe the, uh, this situation. Uh, this building, which is 300 years old, uh, when I was a selectman a number of years ago, I condemned the building and it stayed vacant until such a time as they found a need for it. Back then it was the retirement board. The retirement board was paying a, <clears throat> a very small minimal uh, rent to the town of Falmouth by the retirees of the town of Falmouth who only used it uh, periodically for their, <clears throat> their meetings. The town manager raised the rent and the then head of the retirement board says that's out of line and moved out into a rental complex in the Davis Straits area. My only problem right now is knowing that building from the time that it was moved from Hatchville, <clears throat> it was once called the PDO's Tavern, which I still refer to it as the PDO's Tavern. Uh, I think $100,000 is just a drop in the bucket. I would, like, I would rather see this $100,000 eliminated until you can have a much more complex study of exactly what it needs from the basement, which it has no basement. It has no basement, the, flaws, the floors are not even. There's a number of things wrong with that building for making it a public use building. And this is what bothers me. This $100,000 is a drop in the bucket. Pass it if you want. My personal feeling, I think we could use, use the $100,000 a little better on some other project besides that one. Thank you very much. So Andy, is that, a, a, is that an amendment to strike the line? Are you, are you actually making the motion to strike the line? I, I, at this particular time, I would like to strike the, the $100,000 and, and uh, you know, have, a, have some kind of local committee go in there and, and really evaluate because the human services is, is a, a, a very uh, needed uh, uh, committee for the town. It helps an awful lot of people. Okay. I just don't question, I mean, I just question this $100,000 being sufficient to make that building a public use building. Okay, so the motion on the floor is the amendment to strike the line item of $100,000 for the relocation. Ms. Putnam. Discussion only on this amendment. Yep. Rebecca Putnam, Precinct 9. I, I would tend to disagree with what this amendment is saying. First of all, we just heard, you know, that we've already done a study with CPC funds, an extensive study of this building, which already stated that the second floor is not going to be usable. You have a department paying $25,000 a year in rent. Well, 25 times four years equals 100,000. So therefore, we're recouping our money in four years on the renovations. We've had a very good, and I'm gonna tell you a very good architect, architectural firm, go through the building and say that this is what needs to be done and what should be done to make the first floor habitable and useful. I think it's ridiculous that we would not move forward with something like this, and I would ask you to vote the amendment down. Mr. Lowell. Hello, Nick Lowell, Precinct 5. I'm also the Vice Chairman of the Finance Committee. 
I do want to report that uh, the Finance Committee supported this particular uh, appropriation, and we did just meet just this evening, uh, partly uh, to talk about this issue, um, whether we were supportive it, of it, which we generally, uh, which we are. Uh, we didn't actually vote this evening, but we talked about the $100,000, we talked about the use, we talked about the potential for be there being additional costs and the move, and we're still supportive of it, and I urge you to vote this amendment down. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Brown. $200,000 on this building probably 12, maybe 15 years ago, fixing major structural issues in that first floor and making it safe and, and structurally sound. So it's not the pit that you might have thought it was. Maybe, I don't know if you recall that, but there was a lot of work done a while back. Okay, Mr. Hargraves. Thank you very much. Uh, I would just like to get some clarity around uh, the details of the project needs and goals as it appears on page 44. Uh, between the town administration and the uh, finance director, we have some excellent resources here for our consideration and deliberation. And um, especially these needs and goals are more complete and accurate uh, than they ever have been. And I didn't, as a member of the Finance Committee, I voted in favor of this, but I'm rising to ask this question related to Mr. Dufresne's amendment, because uh, it says here, and we, uh, we discussed this, um, that the funds uh, will be used to update and complete the design as needed and also be used for initial construction. And it was recognized in our discussion that there were further expenses needed uh, to bring the building into the full vision of the accessible part on the first floor. But considering Mr. Dufresne's issue, I would like to ask for clarification. Will this $100,000 make the building suitable for public use? Or does it, is, it, is that going to be contingent on further money spent so it will be a safe and useful workplace? Thank you. Mr. Sousa. Uh, to the best of our knowledge, uh, these funds that we're requesting will uh, do the, the modest additional upgrades necessary to make this the appropriate location for uh, Falmouth Human Services. And having said that, I should note that this building has been in uh, ongoing public use. Uh, we sell beach stickers out of that building every spring. It's done as a matter of routine. It's fully accessible to the public. It's barrier free. Uh, etc. Uh, it's had uh, some significant upgrades uh, already related to uh, the sales of the beach stickers uh, having to do with infrastructure and cabling within the building as well. Uh, and it wasn't that long ago that, uh, as has been noted, the retirement board operated a full service office out of that entire first floor. So we're talking about um, some adjustments and that will make this appropriate for uh, human services use, and that's what we're proposing here. Dr. Schneider. This is the good thing about having a phone with you. So if you go to the cpfund.org page for Falmouth, which is a really great resource, it will remind you that in 2006, this town meeting approved $50,000 from the CP fund to support a $400,000 project to complete the restoration of the Falmouth Poor House. And there was an additional $250,000 approved and that work was all done based on the first $40,000 study of what was needed and then the work being completed by 2008. So Andy, while I appreciate that you thought it was in bad repair, there's already been almost $300,000 put into it since that time, and so it can't be as bad as you remembered. Okay, Mr. Stetcher. Uh, is it on? I 
should push in the up position. Okay, try it again and. Bernie Stetcher, Precinct Three. There we go. I just have a quick question. Um, on page 41, this, how much of the $575,000 that's uh, being asked for? There's a note here. It's for Eddie Marks uh, heating and insulation and air conditioning, uh, but there's no amount for that building. Anybody know? Mr. Sousa? Mr. Moderator, we're taking a look at the uh, our online records to okay. see if we can answer that, if we could just have a moment. Sure. I'll go on to, I'll go on to our next speaker while we're looking up the, uh, the answer to that one. Yeah. Why, don't, why don't you keep that mic, and can I have my other mic carrier go to Mr. Donald, please? Mr. Moderator? Oh, uh, we got the answer already. We have the answer. Uh, 46000 is allocated to that project from, this, uh, from the 575. 46000 and Mr. Donald. Uh, Malcolm Donald, Precinct 6. I have a follow-up question. Um, I'm wondering if the, that uh, nonprofit that you had discussions with had offered any kind of a uh, budget to, um, uh, in regard to that building to uh, restore it. And that's my first question. And my second question is, are we going to replace that uh, industrial door on the front of the poor house that just destroys the character of uh, that very old building. Thank you. Excuse me. Mr. Moderator, I don't have that information here with me, not having anticipated that we'd be getting into a discussion about it. So, uh, uh, you know, again, all, all I'm coming forward with is um, a, an estimate we received from a highly qualified architect uh, to complete some uh, modest first floor uh, adjustments so that the Human Services Department can relocate as the selectmen have voted and uh, uh, directed. And uh, we've been awaiting these uh, ESCO improvements for HVAC to allow it to occur as well. I should also remind, remind town meeting, um, this building, uh, is, as uh, Ms. Snyder has commented and others, uh, has been under the stewardship of the town. Funds have been expended on it. We've done an analysis of it as recently as 2014. Uh, this town meeting also voted funds for roof replacement, uh, a contract which has been awarded and is about to get un in underway. So uh, this concerns the first floor of that building and moving the human services element into that portion. Uh, I would think the discussion of uh, other issues uh, is not with, really within the uh, scope of this particular proposal. Okay, the question that will come on the amendment to, with, uh, to withdraw the $100,000 for the human services relocation. All those in favor of removing the line item, signify by saying aye. All those opposed, no. No. And the chairs that the noes have it by a majority. And we're back to public safety, Ms. Fenwick. Judy Fenwick, Precinct 1. Um, I really appreciate that we've been given the detail for all of the line items in the capital improvement plan, but I think maybe we've opened up um, people doing a lot of homework, so we've got these extra questions. Mine is on page 48 for the $100,000 on security camera upgrade. Just out of curiosity, uh, it's an upgrade for 28 plus security cameras, and I'm wondering if they're so highly secure that we can't know where they are. So my question is, where are these security cameras? I can maybe tell you the zip code that they're going to be in. But <laughs> Chief. Good evening. Edward Dunn, Police Chief, Precinct 8. The security cameras are throughout the building. Most of them are within the cell blocks, which have to run 24-7, 365. And they are recorded, and we have to keep track of all that. We also have them in the booking room, drive through uh, in the they're all over the building. They're in the, the main lobby of the building, and it's all for security within. And those cameras have been there for quite a while. A lot of them are analog, and they're failing. So they're going to be going to digital, and um, they are badly needed. OK. 
Okay, so the general category here of public safety. Facilities. Highway. Vehicles, equipment. Uh, I'm hearing somebody say Mr. Moderator, but I don't see a hand. Where are we at? Oh, Mr. Donald. Malcolm Donald. Uh, is any part of the uh, road, uh, that $890,000 going to be um, to address the Jones Road, Gifford Street intersection, which backs up uh, very badly in the summertime? I'm not sure whether that's back under highway. Mr. McConaughey. Peter McConaughey, Deputy Director of Public Works. Um, these funds are not going to be used for um, Gifford Street, Jones Road. That is not part of this 890,000. Okay, vehicles, equipment. Fleet services. Water. Wastewater. Engineering admin. Mr. Donahue. Through you, Mr. Moderator, Bob Donahue, Precinct 3. Uh, so engineering software, uh, in today's day and age, uh, I can understand if you need a big computer, or maybe a mainframe or something like that, but software is something that um, is, needs to be upgraded yearly, um, at least every couple of years. Why isn't this just in the normal budget of, I guess, the engineering department? I think capital funds, like a dump truck or something like that, that is going to have a service life of uh, five to ten years, maybe. Uh, I, I think that's a capital item. But software in today's day and age um, should be a budget item of, of every department. And, and I see it continuously on things like this, software. Um, thank you very much. Okay. Mr. Moderator, uh, James McLaughlin, town engineer. The, uh, currently, the engineering department has three uh, software licenses for AutoCAD, uh, which is the standard engineering uh, software that uh, just about everyone uses in uh, Massachusetts and actually throughout the country. So um, that uh, software, when it was originally purchased, was on a per seat basis. and it can be used to uh, until the computer basically dies off. Um, about two years ago, the um, company that that uh, provides the software, AutoCAD, they went to a um, uh, subscription basis. So um, there are two things going on. One is uh, our current three seats are at the end of their useful life. And we also have uh, two additional seats where uh, right now we're operating without any AutoCAD. So we're looking for five total uh, licenses uh, to replace the existing three, but they're on a uh, subscription basis. So the request is for uh, the maximum number of years that they will um, offer, which is the cheapest uh, on a per, per year basis. And it's uh, for uh, three years. And that's, and going forward, Every three years, uh, unless they, they modify the subscription um, system, uh, we'll be looking to, to get those uh, reinstated. Okay. Anything else under engineering? Parks? Schools? Yep, back right. Linda 
go back to the engineering software? Okay. My name is Esther Ann Price from Precinct 3. If it is a subscription that you are paying for, it's not a capital expense. It's, it becomes a current expense. Ms. Petit? Um, yes, it should have been an um, article. It's in Article 4. It should have been Article 5. So I put it in capital, and it should have been in the non-capital article. That was my mistake. Okay. Okay. Anything else under schools? Question will come on the main motion as recommended. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, no. The ayes have it unanimous, and the meeting will stand in recess for 15 minutes. Falmouth Community Television's coverage of town meeting is sponsored by the following corporate underwriters. Welcome to the Falmouth Chamber of Commerce. The Falmouth Chamber is dedicated to working on behalf of our members to make Falmouth a better place to live, work, and conduct business. We are committed to developing the economic, cultural, educational, and civic interests of our community and welcome the support from all organizations to achieve our combined goals. Whether you call Falmouth home, are a summer resident, or a visitor, we hope you take advantage of all that the Chamber has to offer. Carlson Printing for all your printing needs. 508-548-7303 or toll free at 1-800-696-7303. Our email address is carlsonprinting at aol.com. Carlson Printing for all your printing needs. Hosting services for FCTV.org are provided by Meganet Communications. Meganet offers a wide array of internet services including Mega Backup Cloud Service, Server Co-location, T1, Fiber, Metro Ethernet, as well as telephone services such as hosted PBX and digital voice. Their number one goal is to keep your communications network up and running and allow you to focus on growing your business. 877-634-2638 or Meganet.net. Additional funding and support provided by the following corporate sponsors. Barrett Plumbing and Heating offers expert plumbing, heating, and air conditioning services to all our residential and commercial customers on Cape Cod and surrounding area. We are a full-service plumbing specialist offering professional workmanship to suit your budget. Whatever your heating or plumbing need, you can always count on a job that's done right. Dogs and Hogs, family-owned and operated for over five years. Our Slow Smoke Barbecue is available for dining, pickup, or catering, now featuring our homemade barbecue sauce. We also serve beer and wine, have gluten-free options, and lobster rolls. 
RJ's Variety and Liquor, family owned and operated for 15 years. We have a variety of beer, wine, and liquor, local frozen stuffed quahogs, local frozen pizza snacks, and more. RJ's Variety and Liquor, 174 Sandwich Road, Tea Ticket. The attorneys at Oppenheim and Nickerson LLP have provided legal services in Falmouth for over 36 years. We advocate for our clients and work to provide quality representation in the areas of business and corporate law, real estate law, estate planning, and estate administration. 508-548-8255. We at Falmouth Fish believe there is nothing better than a fresh piece of fish direct from the waters of Cape Cod in New England. Nothing beats waking up at 4 a.m to search out the highest quality seafood from the best fishermen in the world. Seven Stars Academy, offering martial arts and Tai Chi. Training at Seven Stars Academy can transform your life. It's amazing to see the positive impact it has on our students. Classes for adults and children of all ages. Confidence, not conflict, at Seven Stars Academy of Martial Arts. Hamilton Tree and Landscaping has been proudly serving Falmouth and the Upper Cape since 1978. Located on Route 151, we're available for all landscaping and tree concerns. Appreciating your property is our motto as we continue to keep your tree and landscaping needs our top priority. At a, a Paving, we believe in providing customers with quality products supported by excellent service. We provide commercial and residential seal coating, asphalt paving, and repair services for Cape Cod and Southeastern Mass. a, &A Paving, 508-540-4944. Calfee Insurance, offering insurance policies for your car, home, business, life, and disability. Calfee cares about all your insurance needs. 508-540-2601 and online at calfeeinsurance.com. Thomas J. Bunker and Jeffrey E. Reither are BSS Design, providing land surveying and civil engineering in Falmouth since 1987. Licensed and fully insured, they're located on Catherine Lee Bates Road, and their phone number is 540-8805. Wild Harbor General Store, located in historic North Falmouth Village, providing quality goods and services for 170 years. Continuing to make history with our support of FCTV's coverage of Falmouth Town Meeting. Liam McGuire's Irish Pub. With a newly renovated dining room, it's what an Irish pub should be. Main Street, downtown Falmouth. Bayside Kitchen and Bath at 419 Palmer Avenue in Falmouth, where design and installation professionals work closely with homeowners, architects, and builders, offering a full range of cabinetry, countertops, and faucets. Bayside Kitchen and Bath, returning you to beautiful spaces. Eastman's has been Falmouth's hardware store since 1913. With a newly added retail space providing kitchen accessory and gourmet foods, our friendly staff is available to assist you with your hardware and kitchen needs. 508-540-0407. Carpet Barn, Carpet One Home Showcase, a local family-owned business offering all your premier carpet and flooring needs. They also feature tile and vinyl floors, area rugs, window treatments, and kitchen and bathroom cabinetry serving you at four convenient locations. Cavosa Disposal is proud to provide trash removal, recycling, and composting to local businesses in Falmouth and surrounding communities. Cavosa Disposal would like to thank its customers in Falmouth. Cavosa Disposal, 508-563-5070. Family owned since 1919, at Pirate in Cape Cod, you'll find the latest in men's and women's clothing, as well as ski and tennis equipment and much more. Located on Main Street, Falmouth, and in Chatham, Mashpee, and Hyannis. Puritan Cape Cod, 199 Main Street, Falmouth, and online at PuritanCapeCod.com. FCTV is also supported by the following businesses and organizations. Nobska Lighthouse and Maritime Museum. Friends of Nobska.org. Falmouth EDIC Economic Development and Industrial Corporation, 508-548-7440. Partners Technology Voice and Data Solutions, 781-930-5000. Lacoit Congregational Church, 508-548-5269. Annie Hartcool, Global Real Estate Advisor, Sotheby's International Realty, 
508-868-0664. St. Elizabeth Seton Church, 508-563-7770. Vincent Associates, 548-6500. Turning Point Dance Studio presents the Sea Captain's Nutcracker at Tilden Arts Center in Barnstable. Soar's Flower Garden Nursery, 508-548-5288. M. Duffany Builders, 508-540-3625. Cranberry Nail Spa, 508-495-9999. Neighborhood Falmouth, 508-564-7543. Danny's Barbershop, 508-548-6013. Carl F. Cabosa Excavating, 508-563-5530. Paul's Precision Automotive Repair, 464 Main Street, 508-548-3164. David Rogers Electric, Residential, Commercial, Industrial, TV Studio and Motion Picture, 508-564-7507. Murray and McDonald's Insurance, 800-800-8990. The Davy Tree Expert Company, 508-548-2662. Andy's Barbershop in the Falmouth Plaza. Chapman Colin Gleason, 508 540 4172. Hanush Jewelers, Downtown Falmouth, 508 548 9107. Mahoney's Garden Center, 508-548-4842. The Cape Cod Five, 508-457-5252, capecod5.com. The Cooperative Bank of Cape Cod, 508-495-5010. Martha's Vineyard Savings Bank, 508-627-4266. Vips of Falmouth Volunteers in Public Schools, 508-548-1621. Cape Cod Cleaning, 508-563-7622. Steve's Pizzeria and More, 508-457-9454. FCTV also thanks Roach Brothers, Stop and Shop, and Windfall Market.